Okay, so in part five, what we're going to do is we are going to write a function to update the image based on where we drag sliders to to apply different effects. And um, in part six, we'll actually learn how to write this code more efficiently. So we're going to do it the long way in part five, and then in part six, we'll kind of revisit how to do this in a more efficient way. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a, a function named change slider handler. And this function will be used or will be called anytime we move the slider. So you should have your script.js file open and you should have your app open in the browser. Inside this document.add event list or DOM content loaded function, you want to write our new function underneath the code you wrote to load your image, but before this closing curly, false and semicolon. So I'm going to go ahead and add a comment right now that says this is the function for applying the slider effects. All right. And let's go ahead and write that function. To do that, we're going to go ahead and say function, the name of the function, change slider handler. We're going to pass it the parameter of event, and then we're going to have opening curly, closing curly, and semicolon after the closing curly. All right. The next thing that we want to do is inside of this function, we're actually going to use the Cayman method to replace our image with a canvas and then be able to actually apply the filter. So I'm going to write a couple lines of code, and then I'm going to talk about what each line means. So inside of this function we'll say we'll call the cayman method cayman with a capital c we wanted to get our image by its id image pound image inside of quotes comma then we'll call this function we'll name this function render cayman no parameters but we do need parentheses curly bracket hit enter so you'll see the closing curly bracket, the closing parenthesis. I'm going to add the closing semicolon so I don't forget it. All right, inside this function for Cayman, we're going to say this dot revert dot er, and then sorry, parenthesis false semicolon. So let's talk about what this is doing so far. This first line, Cayman pound image function render Cayman. This is using the Cayman method to actually make a canvas of the image that we have in our app. And then we're gonna call a function named render Cayman. This function will ultimately apply the slider effect. So this dot revert false is gonna clear whatever effects are already on our canvas of our image. And then we're gonna say this bracket event dot target dot name closing bracket parenthesis oops sorry not curly bracket parenthesis event dot target dot value and then we're going to say dot render parenthesis parenthesis semicolon okay this looks like a complicated line of code but I'm going to explain what you what each piece means. So this line, this event.target.name, event.target.value.render, this is what's actually going to apply the effect based on the value that we move the slider to. Event.target is a way for us to um, get some information that we have created in our web app from the event, so the event would be like when we drag the slider, we want to get the name of that slider and we'll replace event.target.name with that. And event.target.value would get the value of the slider. So if I move the brightness, it would get the name of brightness and then it would get the value of where I drag the slider to and then it would say dot render and this would apply the actual effect. So in our index, when we created each of the sliders, we actually gave each slider an ID, but also a name. So event.target.name is getting that name. And then we have an attribute called value. This value changes based on where we drag the slider to. And that would be right there. 
So if we were doing this for brightness, it would say this dot brightness parenthesis 10 dot render and that is Cayman's way of applying the brightness effect. Okay, so this is the function that we're going to use to uh, change the slider or change the effect of the image based on where we drag a slider. We're going to actually call this function anytime any of the sliders are moved. So the next step that we need to do is we actually need to program it so that when a slider changes, we call this function. The first thing for each slider, you're going to create a variable. We'll do brightness first, since brightness is my first slider. We'll say var brightness range. So the name of the variable is going to be brightness range equals, and we're going to get the brightness uh, slider by its ID, document dot get element by ID. The ID is brightness. And then we'll say semicolon. So I'm just going to show you right here for my brightness input, the ID says brightness. I'm going to save that. And now instead of writing document document by ID brightness dot on change, I can just say when brightness range changes, so dot on change, we want to call the change slider handler function. Whoops. Semicolon. All right. Save your change and let's test this out. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. I'm going to choose a file. I'm going to choose puppy2. And now I'm going to try and change the brightness. And as we see, wherever I move brightness to, it changes on my puppy's image. But if I move vibrance, that's not changing anything. That's because we haven't programmed vibrance yet. You're going to go ahead and repeat these same two lines of code, but for each different slider. So I'll show you one more example. If I do it for vibrance, I would say var vibrance range equals document dot get element by D. The ID for this is vibrance semicolon. And then I would say vibrance range dot on change. I'm going to call our same function change slider handler. And this shows why functions are so great. So instead of writing all of these different lines of code for each slider, we can just call this whole function. And it's running all of these lines of code each time we just call it right here with this one line. Let's go ahead and save that. Refresh. I'm going to go ahead. We'll do it on this puppy this time. Let's change brightness. It's working. Vibrance. We can see that the image is becoming more or less vibrant based on where I drag the slider. So now you're going to do this for the rest of your sliders and test them out and then comment your code. And that is going to be part five. Next time when we come back and we look at part six, we're going to find a more efficient way to write each of these. So I'm going to go ahead and add them and show you that mine work. All right, once you've added all of your sliders, go ahead and save your work. Refresh your page. Let's choose our file. And now we can see if our sliders work. And we can see that hue is working. Gamma works. When I move the gamma slider, it does take off the hue one. And that is part five. All right, see you back here for part six, where we'll learn how to write all these lines of code more efficiently.